Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we will be doing the third novel in the Starfire series written by David Weber and Steve White. And it's called The Shiva Option. It was published in 2002. Before we continue, subscribe, give us a like and drop us a comment. When you begin reading the Shiva option and you've already read In Death Ground, then you can pretty much go straight to chapter 3 because the prologue and the first two chapters are what happened in the end of In Death Ground. And now the Shiva option. The Sixth Fleet under Lord Zarnak and with Admiral Prescott as his second got into the Zephyrin system via a closed warp point and remained undetected. This was one of the Bugs' five home systems. And with Directive 18 authorized, they were here to exterminate all the Bugs in the system. The 6th Fleet was divided into two task forces, Task Force 61 and 62. Task Force 61 headed for the first planet, and Task Force 62 headed for the second planet. Planet 1 of the Zephyrian system was the primary population center. It had 26 orbital fortresses and one massive space station. The battle began when they launched fighters with antimatter missiles against the orbiting fortresses of Planet One. They succeeded in destroying the orbiting fortresses and the massive space station, but 250 gunboats was coming up from the planet. Only a few of the gunships managed to get through to the capital ships before they were all wiped out. Then Planet One was undefended and Zana gave orders to implement Directive 18. Fleet 6 fighters began to launch anti-matter missiles down at the planet, along the night side of the planet. Task Force 62 was also successful in destroying Planet 2's orbital fortresses, and they also launched an attack on Planet 2's surface. Planets 1 and 2 had 95% of all life wiped out, and what wasn't wiped out was so irradiated that it would soon die. The 6th fleet then turned its attention to the massive bug fleet that was in the system. The bug fleet had been on the outskirts of the system guarding their only no warp points. But the killing of so many bugs simultaneously had a psychic backlash that disoriented them. So they were easy for the 6th fleet to wipe them out. By the time bug reinforcements showed up, the 6th fleet had rendered the Zafrain system uninhabitable. Then they jumped away. But the bug fleet reinforcements saw the war point that they used. Back in the Zafrin system, on Zafrin A2, the world they call Xanadu, two intelligence officers, Uaria and her human partner Shung, had a theory that they wanted to pass on to Zanak and Prescott. The theory they came up with is that the bugs do not exploit the entire system that they inhabit. They only exploit the world that they inhabit and then they move on. Cloak reconnaissance drones sent into Home Hive 3 showed that the bugs were rebuilding their forces in that system with a preparation to attack through the warp point. Two months later they attacked but the attack was beaten off with heavy losses. Then it was the Allies turn to attack across the warp point into the Home Hive 3 system. And at first they thought they did very well, but then later they found out that a lot of the fortresses they thought was guarding the war point was actually ECM generated and they weren't really there. They actually killed a lot less bugs in this attack than they thought. Meanwhile, Survey for Tiller 19 was saved from destruction by the members of the Star Union of Crucis. It's been 14 months, and in that time, Survey for Tiller 19 have shared its technology with members of the Star Union to help in the fight against the bugs. Summers has also given them co-equal status in the Grand Alliance. The bugs, meanwhile, were smashing through the system of the system, getting close to the system that the Star Union would have to hold. When they finally got to Rimianaga, the Crucians had just gotten their first fighters out of production and into service. And with the asteroid fortresses, they were able to stop the bugs who retreated. The bugs, meanwhile, realized that the Survey Fertilla had survived and they had given the old enemies technology. They had built up their forces to smash the old enemy once they had found them. But instead, they had run into the new enemy and just about all of their reserves have been wiped out. They had assigned one of their systems to deal with the old enemies. But now that the new enemy seems to be given the old enemy technology, that may not be enough. 
but it would have to be because for one of the other four was now radioactive cinders, leaving only three to deal with the far greater threat posed by the new enemies. It was all to them very inconvenient. Rear Admiral Andrew Prescott is in charge of a survey flotilla looking for more bug home systems. An improved just returned through a war point telling him that the system it was in has a major technological civilization. But the war point is a type 14, so the probe came back a bit scrambled. It will take a manned ship to go through the war point and find out what's over there, if it's bugs or someone else. Andrew leaves Captain Snyder in charge of the flotilla and goes through the war point to find out. It turns out to be a major bug system with three inhabited planets. He decides to send that information back and go further in to gather more intel. He got the intel he needed and quickly got out of the system without being seen. And the flotilla headed back home to the L-169 system. But halfway there, they were ambushed by a bug fleet. The bug fleet outnumbered them. But in order to get the service ships back home with that precious information, Andrew Prescott and the ships that were providing protection charged the bug fleet, sacrificing themselves so the survey ships could escape. Fleet Admiral Raymond Prescott, now commanding the 7th Fleet, proceeded down the Andrew Prescott chain, named after his brother. They had to fight their way into AP-5, which they did and succeeded in destroying the bug fleet that was there. They proceeded on down the chain, headed to the newly discovered Home Hive 1. They knew that on their way back, they would have to stop off in AP-5 and fight some bugs there because there was a close warp point in there. Admiral Prescott had divided the 7th Fleet into two groups. Task Force 71, led by him, and Task Force 72, led by Khan Zaanak Telmasa. TF-71 entered the system designated Home Hive 1 Unseen. It had three habitable planets that were all fortified with orbital fortresses. They were able to attack planets 1 and 3 first. The effect of killing so many bugs at once had on the other bugs in the system helped them tremendously. But by the time they were able to turn their attention to the second planet, the effect had worn off. That effect came to be called the Shiva Option. They were able to cleanse all three planets, and by the time the bug forces that were guarding their known war points could get in system, Task Force 71 had jumped back out through the closed war point. Admiral Prescott figured that there was another route between Home Hive 1 and AP-5, and he was hoping they could get to AP-5 before the bugs do. If they didn't, they would have to hang on until TF-72 could get there to help. Meanwhile, the bugs had also figured that there was a hidden war point that led from Home Hive 1 to AP-5 that they couldn't find. So they sent the remaining fleet that was stationed at Home Hive 1 on an intercept course to AP-5. And they also called for reinforcements from a nearby Home Hive that should arrive in AP-5 just after the battle began. Task Force 71 and the bug fleet entered AP-5 at virtually the same time. Admiral Prescott and TF-71 played cat and mouse with the bug fleet trying to stay out of its way while doing damage hoping to hold on until TF-72 could get there. When the bug reinforcements got there as he knew they would, he began luring them closer to warp point 3. Then TF-72 began jumping into the system through warp point 3. When that happened, the bug fleet began to withdraw because their Frano system would be vulnerable to attack if they were all destroyed in this system. Between TF-71 and 72, the 7th fleet was able to destroy most of the fleeing bug ships. So while TF-71 ships were being repaired, Admiral Prescott came up with a plan, a pincer movement. He would go back to Home Hive 1 while TF-72 would go up through in war point and they would catch the bugs in a pincer movement. When Admiral Prescott and Task Force 71 got back to Home Hive 1, they realized that all the bug starships were gone. The only thing left were 35 fortresses and 42 heavy cruisers that guarded each of the five open warp points. 
So Prescott began going to each war point and destroying its defenses and then looking to see what was on the other side then moving to the next one. They had just completed that at the second war point when Amos Chung came to Prescott and told him that this war point led to the pest house system. Admiral Prescott's plan succeeded. He was able to draw the bug forces back into Home Hive 1 to confront him, leaving the way clear for Task Force 72 to come up behind them. Meanwhile, the Arnak and TF-72 went from AP-5 into the next system up the chain, and that system held a bug colony, and for the first time, the bug fleet left its colony to defend itself while it retreated up the chain. TF-72 eliminated that colony and found out that even though it was a smaller colony, the psychic effect still worked. Meanwhile, back in Home Hive 1, Prescott and TF-71 jumped into the next system following the bugs that had suddenly retreated. That system held a bug colony that after serious fighting, they were able to destroy. The bugs then tried to lure them into a dead end system, but Prescott didn't fall for it because he had seen when they sent out a message drone and where it went, and that's what he followed. That system was empty, so they proceeded through it without difficulty. Now TF-71 and TF-72 stood on either side of this system. This system was a major bug system. It wasn't up to a home hive level yet, but it was getting there. The 7th Fleet entered the system known as Farnos, with Admiral Prescott using the bug tactic of simultaneous war point transitions. After heavy fighting, they were able to destroy the bug forces within the system, but when they got to the planet, they ran into a problem. It turns out that the bugs in the system were using the natives on the planet and intelligent species as a domesticated food source. So they will not be implementing Directive 18 on that planet. Then Admiral Prescott declared Operation Retribution at an end. For now, the initiative is in the hands of Admiral Murakuma and the 6th Fleet at Zephrain. Admiral Murakuma and the 6th Fleet entered Home Hive 3 with orders to wipe out the remaining bug fleet that was in the system. It was a fierce fight, but in the end, Marakuma and the 6th Fleet wiped out all bug resistance in Home Hive 3 with only three bug ships escaping. And since they had discovered that Home Hive 3 was just one system away from Home Hive 1, they traveled through to Home Hive 1 to meet up with Admiral Prescott and the 7th Fleet. Admirals Marakuma, Prescott, and Zarnak met to discuss their next step. They found that there were two systems linking Home Hive 3 and Home Hive 1 that were heavily defended. And there was another system beyond that. All three systems was called Orpheus 1, 2, and 3. And because of the heavy defenses, they believed there must be a Home Hive lurking beyond them. Admiral Marakuma and the 6th Fleet was going to go down that chain to find out. And she began her assault by clearing out Orpheus 2 and 3. She then fought her way into Orpheus 1. There she got confirmation that there must be a home hive system just beyond because of the reinforcements that came in to Orpheus 1. The 6th fleet managed to get out of Orpheus 1 back to Orpheus 2 without too much damage. Meanwhile, the 7th Fleet made plans to attack a heavily defended pest house system. The 7th Fleet entered the pest house system from two different chains, from Bug 5 and Home Hive 1. The Bug Fleet only sent their gunboats against the 7th Fleet while making sure that their capital ships retreated out of the system. Meanwhile, elements of the 8th Fleet was headed down the Anderson chain towards Pest House, hoping to meet up with the 7th Fleet and trap the bugs in between. As they left Alpha Centauri and headed to Anderson 1, they noticed that the bug fleet that was trying to escape them, they noticed that the bug fleet, instead of heading to Anderson 2, went off into a new war point in an attack formation. So they followed them and found them attacking someone new. So under the principle that any enemy of the bug is my friend, they went in to help that new group and that's when Rear Admiral Eileen Summers from the Survey for Tiller 19 introduced the Star Union of Crucis to the Alliance. The Fertiller had been gone for five years and of course the Alliance quickly endorsed what she did because with her unknowing help, she had forced the bugs to split their attention and to fight on two fronts. At the first Alliance conference that included the Crucians, the Crucians 
had found out about planets like Hana, where the bugs have made the native population food source. And it also turns out that Hana was the home world of the Telecans, who are members of the Star Union. They asked that these planets not be bombed, and they promised to give 50% of the ground forces that are going to invade these planets. That offer was accepted. Then the 7th Fleet attacking from Pest House and the 8th Fleet attacking from Anders 1, both of them facing massive bug fleets. Both fleets were engaged in ferocious battles and just as the 7th Fleet was about to lose, something happened. The bugs who were mentally one suddenly split into two, with one group deciding to go back and protect its home system at the expense of unity. This is something that shouldn't have been able to happen, but it did. Each of the last three bug home hives were on their own. Meanwhile, the 6th fleet with Marakuma finally attacked what they now knew was Home Hive 2. Home Hive 2 was a binary star system with 5 habitable planets, 2 around one star, 3 around the other. They were the most industrialized of the hive homes and they beat back Marakuma's 6th fleet. Meanwhile, the Alliance Council gave permission for the 8th fleet to attack Hive Home 4, which they believe is only one transit away from Bug 21. The 8th Fleet was led by First Fang Yanathar. The 8th Fleet jumped into Home Hive 4. It was divided into two task forces. Task Force 86 was under the command of Warmaster Rika of the Star Union, and Task Force 84 was under Admiral Harthan. Warmaster Rika attacked Planet 2 causing the Shiva effect, which gave First Fang Yanthar the time he needed to attack Planet 1 with token opposition. With both planets now dead and the system battled up, they left the fortresses to starve. There was just two hive homes left. Admiral Marakuma and the 6th Fleet were ready to try attacking Home Hive 2 once again. The bugs in Home Hive 2 were waiting, but they had set up a hidden colony just in case the worst happens. Marakuma instead of going for the nearest star with its three planets decided to go to the furthest one with its two planets and that surprised the bugs and since they were not expecting that she was able to get there get through their defenses and destroy those two planets which caused the shiva option to occur that's when the bugs called for the return of a fleet that they had in an adjacent system that fleet had over 100 dreadnoughts so admiral marakuma left the system they had accomplished half of what they set out to do Meanwhile, the Great Khan was leading the third fleet to confront the bug fleet that was stationed there. When they got into bug six, they saw the great fleet heading into a warp point, only to have gunboats turn around and attack them. But once they got a report from astrography concerning the system, they realized that it was Home Hive 2. Once he realized that, he withdrew to wait and coordinate their attack. Meanwhile, Wingmaster Hacker has launched his attack on the Telex system, where the bugs have been using the Telekians as livestock. He got in, fought the bugs, and secured the system. After destroying the orbital fortresses and the space station, the Telekians landed on their home planet, a planet they haven't seen in over a hundred years. They had come to free their people the hard way. After a month of heavy fighting, they had secured the planet. It wasn't totally free of bugs, but it was secure enough for them to begin the rebuilding process. Remaining bugs would be hunted down. Something this attack showed was that the Shiva option effect didn't actually require the instantaneous annihilation of massive bug populations. The effect appeared to be cumulative and began to snowball once a certain threshold was reached. But no one really knew how much millions of deaths that threshold requires. The 3rd Fleet and the 6th Fleet re-entered Home Hive 2 to finish the job. They were virtually unopposed. The bugs were surprised when the fleets headed for the asteroid belt instead of going after the planets. In the asteroid belt, they picked 9 asteroids, 6 small ones and 3 big ones. The big ones averaged 400 kilometers in diameter. They put drives on them and aimed them for the 3rd planet. All they had to do now was to protect them until they got there. The bugs of course figured out what was happening and sent everything they had to try and stop them. They tried again and again to stop them. In the end they were able to disrupt or deflect all but two of the small ones and alter the orbit of one of the big ones. One of the big ones, Sledgehammer Tree, slammed into the third planet, sterilizing its surface. The other tree also hit two small ones and the other big one. 
Nothing was left on the planet when they were done. They were in the system for a year before they could confirm that all the bugs in the system were dead. Now there was only one home hive left. On Nova Terra in the Alpha Centauri system, the Alliance made plans for their final attack on the, on the final bug hive home, Hive Home 5. It was to be led by the chairman, Kathara Zarthan, and the Grand Fleet was to involve every member of the Alliance. They launched their attack into Home Hive 5 from Anderson 3. The bugs knew they were coming and they knew they were going to lose this war, so they were going to take as many out as they could. They sent in warp missiles first and then used simultaneous transits into the system. The bugs threw everything at them, hoping that with the heavy losses they would retreat, but this time they didn't. Admiral Prescott's ship was shot out from under him, as was his shuttle. But he was rescued. The bugs threw everything they had at them and they didn't break and they had nothing else left with which to fight. The Grand Fleet then attacked the double planet which is the third planet in orbit using their speed to get by the orbital fortresses. They destroyed both planets. It was the last use of the Shiva option. They then went and destroyed the other two planets. All that was left to do was the mapping up which would be destroying the bug colony worlds. Eileen Summers was made the official ambassador to the Star Union. The Star Union still had some mapping up to do. Admiral Prescott was named commander of the home fleet. Zarnak Talmasa would be working for the Khan. And that is how the book ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like. Drop us a comment. And I will see you in the next video.